Hello viewers, this is Carbengo and welcome again for a new episode of Let's Play Warship Gunner 2. Today's mission is Aida's Tears. The Suez Canal is up for grabs and we're gonna take it. In the last episode, we liberated Greece, forcing the Empire back to the Suez Canal, its last bastion of influence in the Mediterranean Sea. Today, our forces will proceed to capture the Suez Canal itself. Should they succeed, the Empire would be repelled out to the Red Sea, blocking any reinforcement coming from the Indian Ocean. Our ship's mission is to eliminate the fleets defending the canal's mouth. According to Intel, the enemy fleet is stationed around three major ports, Cyprus, Alexandria and Port Said. The Empire is expecting our attack and has already deployed its forces all over the sector. Finally, there is an air base reported on Cyprus Island, so we'll have to endure an air raid. Once again, we aren't told much about what type of enemy we'll meet, so we better prepare for any threat above and under the water. This mission calls for a polyvalent vessel. I believe a cruiser should do the trick. Well, then, sounds like the Slipnir is up for duty again. But before I start the mission, I want to make some adjustments to my cruiser. By the by, I've been asking the comments to show more shipbuilding sequences. I have no problem with that, thus I'll be making upgrades to my ship on camera today, and probably more often times in the future. Let's jump right into design mode. Alright, first thing first, I want a larger hull for my ship. I'm currently using the UK Cruiser Mark IV, and I'm going to exchange it for a UK Cruiser Mark V, which is larger and boasts better endurance and tonnage. I like to stick to one nation for a certain class. See, some parts are now misplaced in red, but that's not a problem, I'll just remove the helipad to save weight. I won't need helicopters for the next mission anyway. Also, let's have four to heads, why not? I'll upgrade these structures as well. Let's have the Mark III bridge turned into Mark IV bridges. Alright, let me adjust the turret a bit. I want them to closest to the middle section so as to reduce the VP rating. The idea is still to save weight for armor. Now, you may have noticed I discarded the Death Charges launcher. I want to try a more advanced weapon in its place. What about SW guided torpedoes? As you can see, those are really powerful. They deal a thousand damage per hit, which is more than enough to one-shot most submarines. Let's have a pair of those mounted on the aft deck. Two barrels per pod is enough. More tubes is just uh, good to waste ammunition, believe me. For armor, I'm gonna go with 31 cm plating, but you see, this caused the design to go overweight. To balance that, I'm going to remove some of the guns, like this. Ok, at the start we had 9 guns with 3 turrets against 8 guns in 4 turrets now. So we did lose some direct firepower, but we gained in defense and endurance in exchange. Plus more power against subs, and this will be a great help for what is coming next. Now then, I have my ship set for action with its improved armor and brand new guided torpedoes. All we need to do now is to go to battle. The mission begins in the northwest corner of the map. First things to do, set a course towards the center to engage this enemy squadron who just appeared on the radar. While we are sailing, I would like to give you more details over the objectives. Firstly, our main targets are the battleships, and we must sink them all to the last. They are spread amongst four squadrons, the first three of which consist of one battleship along with cruisers and destroyers. Not very menacing. But the fourth one is a full-blown group of ten battleships, and they are nasty. More details on them later. The second thing to know about this mission is there are three secondary objectives to accomplish. And of course, they are mandatory to obtain a 100% completion rate and S rank, but here's the catch. These objectives are hidden when the mission begins, and it's up to you to discover them by scoring the map until you receive them all three. 
So now, I'm engaging this first enemy squadron. I see cruisers and destroyers, but no battleship just yet. This one group is the weakest of the map and should cause you no trouble at all. I'm not finished talking about the objectives by the way. In all honesty, the first time I did this mission, I didn't suspect their existence until I saw my score at a 25% completion rate. I had a hard time figuring out what to do. In fact, I found out mostly by accident you are supposed to visit the harbors. Bear in mind, there is no incentive to sail close to the shores, really. All the babies are out at sea, after all. It's only after some time that I realized the game gives you a hint by putting out the three arbors in its corners. Oh well, I guess I can't get a clue. All this to say, there is a part of exploration required to find all secrets. Or you can just explore game facts instead. Your call. As I smash my way through these enemies, I'm plotting a course eastward where the first secondary objective awaits us. On a side note, you may have noticed the large submarine pack in the center. I could take on these guys right away, but I prefer to go to Cyprus first. I believe it's the best to destroy the airbase as soon as I can to put an end to the air raids. Don't worry though, I'll be back soon enough. I wouldn't miss on the 100% kill ratio, would I? Here's our first stop, Cypress. Straight away we received a new objective, which is to destroy the airbase, who would have guessed? The base in question is found on the island southern shore, and the island itself is defended by multiple gun batteries. I recommend you destroy those too while you're at it. They come towards uh, another objective later on, so that's always good to take. And bam, no more airbase. That's one out of four. Now we should move toward the next harbor. But wait, there is more to Cyprus than this airbase. Let me show you. Oh, what is this? Hidden in the shadows of Cyprus. Well, an offshore secret base, of course. As usual, blow it up with your guns and reclaim the crate. Awesome, now let's go get those submarines. So, what do we get here? SSS. <laughs> oh, oh, that's funny because it reminds me of the aircraft carrier in Hot Shots. What was it called again? Man, I love that movie. Although I watched Hot Shots 2 first and not of both, the sequel remains my favorite. They just don't do that kind of surreal comedy movies nowadays. On a more serious note, those are British S-Class subs. Not very remarkable, in this game they are pretty weak like all subs. Apart from that, I have found some interesting trivia I'd like to share about them. The S-Class was designed to succeed to the H-Class in the role of a small patrol sub operating in enclosed waters, such as the North Sea and Mediterranean. As a matter of fact, it became the largest single group of submarines ever built for the Royal Navy, numbering 62 boats produced over a period of 15 years. A remarkable feature of the S-Class was that all the ship's christening name began with S, like HMS Swordfish, Sturgeon, Seahorse or even Starfish. And now for the saddest part of the story. Of the 12 vest boats that were in service in 1939, only 3 survived to see the end of World War II. The loss rate was so appalling, it inspired a song called 12 Little Boats, one of the numerous Brims war songs popular among sailors during the war. And this concludes this episode Naval Trivia Minute. Very handy to fill voids in the comments, don't you think? <laughs> Besides, it gave me plenty of time to demonstrate how trivial it was to hunt submarines with guided torpedoes. And that's not even the best ASW weapon in the game, not by a long shot. Also, you see why I don't need more than two tubes per launcher. There is no point in having more when the targets die the first shot. Even a single tube would suffice, but the option isn't there, sadly. Whatever, I think I'll kill the rest of them on my own. Then I'll meet you back ahead. Now that I'm done with the subs, it's time for la pièce de résistance. Let's take on the big battleship squadron. 
The squadron is a full pack of Queen Elizabeth's class, just like the one we fought aboard Slip Neon back in episode 30. Incidentally, we almost went to the bottom that one time, but don't panic just yet. Our ship has been upgraded, we have seen what those guys are capable of, so now we know, and knowing is half the battle. So what I'm doing here, I'm shooting them from afar with my main guns. I could stay at a safe distance and snipe, but I don't want to spend 5 minutes picking them to death with my puny 25cm. I merely want to soften them up until I get in range for torpedo attack. With luck, I might weaken them enough to sink them in a few salvos. However, I don't want to stay close for too long, because if my ship is most effective at point blank, so are they. The closer I am, the more accurate they are. Ok, I'm in position, fire the torpedoes! It goes without saying, you better make sure you're stuck full on torpedoes before confronting this pack. You know how fast these babies get used up. Come to think of it, this is one weak point on my design I haven't addressed yet. I should work on my ammo capacity for the next slip new iteration. Well, that's 10 more notches on my gun, so to speak. We're not too far from completing the main objective. A few meters from here is our second stop, Port Said, which serves as the access to the Suez Canal from the Mediterranean Sea. Once you get close enough, you receive a new objective, destroy 6 gun batteries. Now that's convenient. If you destroyed all the batteries back at Cyprus like I did, this objective should already be complete, uh, as you can see in my log. At this time, I'm free to turn around and head to the next port, but for the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna mess up this place real good before I go. It's pretty straightforward, the guns are surrounding the scanner's mouse, just with engagement mode to level the place. Oh, we can see the canal quite clearly here, but it's just a dead end oddly enough. Oh well. Alright, time to move on to Alexandria. I'll meet you right over there. Here we are at the port of Alexandria, with our last objective coming up. Uh oh, looks like we're in trouble. Reinforcements have arrived. What we have? 5 carriers and 3 cruisers, and our job is to eliminate the carriers! No, this can get ugly really fast. Let me explain. 5 aircraft carriers mean 5 times the airplanes. Carriers continuously spit out planes until their death, which means we're in danger of being swarmed by flyers. And that's not all, the cruisers are nasty too. They can attack you with missiles. You really don't want these guys alive for too long, so get in there quick and give them hell! Here we got uh, Hermes class carriers, the first purpose built carriers ever, and London cruisers, part of the county class heavy cruisers. In this game, both are pretty average ships and should die quickly enough. Especially the Hermes, which I believe is the least advanced enemy carrier in the game. But then again, you should be more afraid of the planes than the ships themselves when dealing with a carrier battle group. And that's it, the carriers have been destroyed, awesome! That means we complete all the secondary objectives. Now it's time to conclude by sinking the last battleship waiting north from here. Onwards! There it is, the ultimate pack of enemies. With at its center, the last BB to add to my tally. One more occasion to prove my ship is the best, as I'm firing torpedoes and they die like the rest! <laughs> Did you like my rhyming, viewers? Yeah, me neither. I'm not doing that again, promise. The more I progress, the harder it gets to find legitimate comment for this playthrough. There isn't much to say here, though. This mission takes end as soon as the Queen Elizabeth sinks. And I'm not talking about the ocean liner. Down she goes, say hi to your sister ship at the bottom. Mission accomplished! Well now, if it wasn't for those last two ships still afloat, I would have withdrawn on the spot. Also, one per crate, big deal. 
But I do want a 100% kill ratio on my log. Cannot live without that. Hold on, my OCD brain is happy, so I can finally end this mission. Mission complete. Now, let's leave the area. Huh, what a success! The Imperial ran off to the Red Sea, leaving the whole Mediterranean in our hands. However, I can't help but fear they won't let it go so easy. They'll be back for revenge, and it will be terrible, that's for sure. Now for the battle results. We accomplished a lot actually, and the game awards us a well-deserved S rank for a full set of 4 objectives accomplished. As for the loot, we get a gas turbine Mark 5, gas turbines Mark 3, a decoy launcher in the treasure crate, a gas turbine Mark 4, uh, 120 7mm IV guns, and a secret blueprint, Aegis Congo type. Now that's a cool ship, this is the modern Japanese Navy destroyer, as opposed to the World War II battleship class. Well folks, it's time for me to end this episode. I sure hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please don't miss the next episode of Let's Play Warship Gunner 2. I'm Carbengo, thanks for watching.